the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out here anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Numbers 6 and 22. For Ahiah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Ahiah bless thee and keep thee. Ahiah make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Ahiah lift his countenance upon thee and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Barakathom, Yasha Allah. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We're the elders of the Gathered of Christ Church here live with your, with our weekly Sabbath service. Our weekly Sabbath service, we like to do it sometimes, but sometime between 12, 1 o'clock. But uh, I'm glad to be here before you all. Praises be to the Most High. I'm Elder Rikashia of the Gathered of Christ Church. And do us a favor before, before the class, before the Bible opens, before we dive in. Please hit the like button. I don't have to tell you why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what it is. The last, the last thing YouTube, the corporate YouTube Bork will allow is for our particular broadcast to be recommended. So there's no recommendations for the Gathering of Christ Church anywhere on YouTube. <laughs> so hit the like button. <laughs> it's through your help others receive the knowledge during our live broadcast hope you all can hear us clearly all right uh before we go in i just have a few announcements so that brothers and sisters can know what to look forward to uh this coming year perim is coming up next week and i just have to, we, have, we just have to make sure that brothers and sisters understand the progression of the church where the Most High is taking this globally before everything begins to shut down, all right? So I'm going to make a few announcements, and after that, we'll dive right in to the lesson. Okay, the first announcement. Shalom, I hear you all saying shalom, shalom to you, shalom. I'm not ignoring your your, your, your comments, your, wish, your well wishes and, and all that. I'm just focused. Let me do this. Shalom to you all. Let's jump in. <laughs> right. Announcements. The next Hebrew and Bible Academy will start March 12th, 2023. Okay. March 12th. 
Now, you can enroll by going to historytimes.org, all right? All lessons in the upcoming academy. First time we're going to deal with a theme-oriented 12-week lesson, okay? All lessons in this up upcoming academy will have an overall theme centered around spiritual warfare and how to battle against it. Every lesson will have this theme, okay? The spiritual imp implications of what we're actually teaching and how to apply it real time in this spiritual war that's up against us at this point. It can no longer be hit. Those who believe in God and Christ are under attack. So I'm going to make sure we make that the primary theme of this academy. Every lesson will either be brand new or updated with spiritual warfare as it's focused. And here are the lessons you can look forward to. Creation of the universe, a new updated lesson. The state of the world or the state of the universe, mind you, before its physical and spiritual corruption, before evil or darkness came into existence. The promised seed, an updated lesson. What we'll highlight here is the Messiah who was born of the promised seed to destroy the works of darkness. See, religion would like to minimize Christ's worth, to only have us focused on his life while, uh, while the Roman Empire was at its height. Well, guess what? Christ was written in the heavens, in the heavenly tables before earth was created. So I'm going to go into the whole prophecy before earth, the Messiah, in this lesson, the promised seed. The fall of Israel and Judah. How did our people, how did our people fall to such depths? Turned into less than third world throughout the earth. Destroyed, destitute, without any direction. After what? After being on earth the greatest people to have ever graced the, this plane. How did kings and priests fall to nothing? Well, I'm going to go into that, the fall of Israel and Judah. But of course, I'm not going to teach the fall. We're not going to teach the fall without highlighting the rise. Israel, we're rising from the ashes. We're rising from the ashes. And guess what? The Gentiles are on 100. They're on 100. They've all consolidated their power to focus on putting this back in, in the pot. But no, I'm not just going to talk about how we, how we fell. I'm going to also highlight the rise and the gathering of the children of Israel in that particular lesson and its spiritual impact on this earth. Hence the reason people talking about racism, anti-Semitism, and all these things as if we created these isms. The reason why they're going into all this anti stuff, because I'm going to tell you folks, it's aimed at trying to stop our people from acknowledging our true origin, race, and purpose. How can they now claim us to be the racists and the haters? Who's subjected more to racism and hatred than we are? So the only reason they're going into that, folks, is because why? Once we know we're Israel and come back together under our God, at that time, one be begins to realize who they are. And now, not just our people will have questions. All people begin to ask questions. Well, if you are the Israelites, <laughs> what's going on over there? What's happening over there if you're the people? Well, common sense would tell you what uh, we're the people. Deuteronomy 28, slave ships, suffering, being scattered throughout all nations, being scattered throughout the world. So now they're coming up with all these hate terms, not, not to highlight or not to stop hatred, so to speak, but to use it as a political wall to stand behind to bludgeon us back into submission. I'm going to be good. Hey, but
But no, nah, you can't let, listen, we're rising from the ashes. And I don't care what you try to call it. You can call it hatred. You can call it cult. You can call it all that. But what we're teaching here and our people all throughout the earth, folks, guess what? Nothing else can quantify what's happening in the earth. And if Israelites weren't teaching, there would be no truth in this earth. We're rising from the ashes. I mean, it took us to point out the fact that the majority of religions, Christian, Christians, are just outright pagans. <laughs> Worshiping Satan in plain, out in plain sight. It took us to come and state the obvious. And this was before the internet, folks. This was before YouTube. We was out on those streets saying, don't y'all know that everything you're doing has a satanic origin, that it's pagan? I would expect pastors in the Christian church to stand for truth and stand for the Bible and point out the works of darkness within their rituals and, 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 and their rituals and ceremonies. I would expect them to do that. See? But no, they were quiet. You think, you think these pastors don't know that Sunday worship and all that is pagan? They're worshiping Satan outright in front. And it took Israelites to actually expose that, de that deception over the world or on our people. Let me go through it. Hebrew and Bible Academy, March 12th. We have a brand new lesson. The fall of Israel and Judah, the origin of Israel's kingship and Israel's fall to idolatry, witchcraft, and the works of darkness. How did Satan initiate our leaders to the dark side? The prophets stood firm. See, the prophets stood firm. It wasn't, it wasn't all of us going off, but they were able to do what? Coax our leadership over our government. They was able to bribe us to the dark side. Prince Hall Freemasonry, anyone? anyone? I digress. We have no leaders in, the, in this country. We have no leaders in this world. All of our great minds are used, are used, folks, under organizations, top dark organizations, to keep us from ever understanding the light we are about to dive into today. The battle against, now check out this new lesson. <laughs> the battle against witches and warlocks, a brand new lesson. How ancient witchcraft has been modernized and used as a weapon, a social weapon in our current times. Man, that lesson is gonna blow the lid off of everything when you realize what a modern day witch and warlock looks like. Bibl and we're gonna drop in this lesson Biblical principles on how to battle spiritually against spiritual wickedness in high places. How do we spiritually oppose those who created Planned Parenthood? Those who, 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 who actually deal with secret and dark advisors in the White House and all these others who are actually dealing with dark forces to keep the children of Israel in, in the dark as Pharaoh. How do we spiritually battle against them? Instead of complaining about what they're not doing. Right? <laughs> because a president, an elected official, folks, they don't do anything without spiritual consultation. Their legislation is led from the spiritual world. They consult before they roll out any legislation that, that destroys the world. That, that's aimed towards our people. So, but, but where's our consultation? Where do we lean on? How do you know you're being attacked and how to actually not only stave off the attack, but win it? We're going to talk about that. You don't know that we're putting our lives and our children's lives in the hands of sorcerers, witches, and warlocks. Huh. The battle against witches and warlocks, brand new lesson in the academy. Can't wait to teach that. Round table two. Everyone loved this, Elder Lawyer. The divine, uh, the, the divide, excuse me, the divide between man and woman, 
Round table talk two, a round table discussion. Discussing the various levels of social engineering and propaganda that, is, that have been used to separate and destroy the oldest established institution on earth. Marriage and family. And of course, we're going to talk about the spiritual battle. The spiritual battle, folks. I'm going to tell you this. Just to give y'all an insight to where we're going. There was an ancient ideology way back. And people are talking about it now. But we've been talking about this for a long time. About the worship of Simramesis. Which in this modern time is the worship of divine femininity. Because they can control the world through sexual access. A woman has the power to control the world because she has the power of what? Her body and who she allows. Well, there's a whole nother level to this when it comes to divine femininity. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going into this because it changes a woman into something else. And by default, a man who needs the love and comfort of a woman when he capitulates for her to get her, he becomes something else. And both of them out of place can be controlled by the works and hands. The works of darkness can, can, can control those both when they're out of their natural function. I'm going there. This is how witches and warlocks controls families. We're going to have a roundtable discussion. And we're going to talk about this worldwide. Also, we're going to have a lesson exposing in this theme also. Exposing the, uh, the evil that's in the harlot's cup that have destroyed the world. The top witches and warlocks, folks, are from uh, are, are out of the Vatican, folks. Or out of the Vatican. Top witches, top warlocks, top sorceress. It's the most evil. The religion in the in the earth, that's the most evil, if I can even say so comes directly from the Vatican. It's the original religion of Cain. Okay? So we're going to be talking about that and more in the academy. And, uh, hey, I'm going to do this academy as if, as if, hey, like I do every academy, as if this will be the last three months we'll have one. The information that we're going to put out there, if you don't know what to do once you see these 12 weeks with spiritual warfare... There's not much I'm going to, we can say after this. All right. So I just wanted to put that out there for y'all. I have a few more announcements that I wanted to put out there, but I wanted to just put that out there first. Uh, last but not least, uh, we are pleased to announce uh, the launch of our brand new social media platforms. Okay. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, along with New integrated platform, a new integrated platform that links everything, everything of the Gathering of Christ Church into one location. Okay, this way you'll be able to access the platforms uh, through our new QR code. And you see our new QR code right here. You can use it on your phone or URL link, which will be on our main church's website. OK, it will be on our main church, Academy websites, YouTube and all other social media. Now, we're doing this. Why? Time is short. OK, our goal is to extend our reach all over the world through social media outlets, which in return will help grow our church community and spread the truth further before they begin to shut things down. These platforms will be used to release exclusive content and provide frequent updates directly from us and leaders all over the earth. Okay, so look forward to this. We understand there's a short time and the most I have always, have always through the spirit of the Almighty from the throne, 
have allowed us through the spirit of the most high to be a few steps ahead ahead of what's going on. All right. So this way we can get the word out. Uh, uh, awaken those of the 144,000 that was prophesied to finish what the most I have in God's people, which is what? Bringing again the elect of God under Christ. Okay. Now I have a few more announcements, but I'll wait to the end of this to deal with this. Without any further of ado, brothers and sisters, let's go into the lesson. Go to historytimes.org. Okay. History times.org. All right. Let's jump right in, other way. Let's do the Shammai. Shammai, Yasha Allah, Ahaya, Allahayanawa, Ahaya Akkad. Shammai, Yasha Allah, Ahaya, Allahayanawa, Ahaya Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and his name is Ahaya. Now, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Please hit the like button as you come in. Thank you. Let me turn these things off, these machines here. Okay, we're good. Again, I'm Elder Ricard Shear the Gathering of Christ Church, and I thank you for your presence here on the Sabbath. Today, we're going into a serious lesson. And what is this lesson? Endurance through adversity. And what, brothers and sisters, whether you know the truth or not, whether you believe in the Bible or not, I'm going to tell you right now, the whole world has been socially engineered. Socially engineered, for those who don't understand, into a spirit of depression. It's systematically done. Okay? Depression is socially engineered, folks. And this is why I'm dropping endurance through adversity. And what to do to get ourselves back. Now, when I say depression, we must quantify the word depression. Really what, and guess what? That could be subjective, depending on the individual, you know, what puts them into a dark place or, you know, a place where, you know, you give up, you feel there's no hope. That can be subjective, but I've quantified it. I thought about it this morning. What makes me upset to the level of being depressed? Right. Usually depression comes on with the normal scenarios with me. When I lose a close person, someone that's close to me, see that type of depression is normal. All right. You don't need medication or all these others to get over that. This is this is a natural progression that's healthy. To know that you're balanced when you lose someone and you care for someone and it and it breaks you down to where what? You go into a little hermit mode. Well, well, that that's that that's that time of mourning, that seven days that that's that so there's a natural depression that you can come out of. Anyone with a conscience would actually mourn losing someone close. That's good. That's fine. When I say that's good, that's a natural emotion and reaction that's expected. Okay? When our forefathers in the past, the prophets, teachers, when Jacob died, when Joseph died, the whole Egypt sh shut down and mourned. That's natural. But folks, when do you know that your depression is engineered? And see, and this is why I'm going into this lesson today, endurance through adversity. Because mourning is supposed to allow you seven days to shut down, to reflect in that moment. So that now you go through the highs, the lows of that relationship, 
But now through that seven days of mourning, you are, you are mentally and spiritually what? Healthy enough after that mourning period to become greater, to do greater things. You've mourned. You've done what you needed to do. But I believe the satanic sorcerers and, 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 and straight maniacal evildoers over psychology, which is sorcery, Looked at, looked, looked at that seven day morning and say, suppose we can keep a person in this state for the majority of their life. Suppose we can keep you in a state of mourning and dependence all your life. Only to be utilized by the dark side. Now, this is not where I'm taking the whole lesson. But I'm just setting the stage or setting the table, excuse me, for the lesson today. Endurance through adversity. And I'm saying that through I was able to quantify depression as what? Instead of because it could be subjective, depending on the individual. Right. I look at depression as an unfulfilled when, when someone has unfulfilled expectations. unfulfilled expectations in life where someone feel that they have failed in achieving the life they dreamed of. When you come to the point and realize everything I ever wanted and dreamed for will never become reality. Usually when someone, they'll look at their life and have regret and say, this is not what I wanted for myself. And they stay in a constant state of depression. That's the problem. Because the image of the beast actually gave us an idea of what our life should be. So we must go back to its simplest form when it comes to expectations to not feel like failures. And I'm going to go here today with this because we're going to set the table with the, with, with the what? With the expectations that the expectations that God has for us. The expectations that we can succeed in regardless of what the world's doing. And I want to talk about that because why? We are in the midst of of serious adversity. We're under attack. Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Let's go now to 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. 2nd Ezra, 16. Now, what I'm going to do here, brothers and sisters, Now, why am I going here, folks? Because when you're depressed, Satan has a fix. Right? You go to the doctor's office. The first thing they ask you, whether or not you're anxious, whether or not you're feeling good. When they know the, the, the majority of the earth is depressed, they're taking everything away. They're systematically taking everything away. Why? So that they can assimilate all people who are depressed into the singularity. They're taking away all hope. But you don't know when you get on this stuff what that stuff is prepping you for. It's prepping you. You're going to feel numb and all that, but why are they breaking your body down? So that they can utilize you for the dark side. So when the Bible states, be sober-minded, Understand Satan gonna, will always come with a solution. And after that solution, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Why do you think brothers like Kanye West, when he's speaking all that, and when he's dealing and all that, he's battling with his thoughts and his thoughts run into other thoughts and he's but he's trying to actually get out what, you know, what's going on with him, 
right? Why? Because for years he was under, he said it himself, he was under this doctor from Canada who had him on some stuff, who actually committed him into one of these asylums and had electro, electroshock treatment and started putting him on stuff and threatened his family and threatened him to put him on more stuff. So he's battling against what? The solutions they have for him as a form of control to keep him under the singularity, folks. So what we must do as believers is temper our expectations and stop getting depressed based on the idea you had for yourself. That's not the idea God had for you. Accept your current state and build from there. And th this is where we're going today. Accept where you are. God have you there. No matter how we got here, this is where he has us. Stop looking for uh, uh, alternative meds and all this other stuff to fix what only you can fix by tempering your expectations. Let's go. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse number 36. All right, let me put, let me uh, blow this up, Elder. We're in the Holy Bible. Second Edris. One, two. All right. Second Edris 16, and let's start at 36. I'm going to do it here so that you can all follow the scriptures. The second Edris is, this is part of the Bible, folks. It's in your Catholic Bibles, but they won't allow you to do this in your communities. They don't think you're smart enough. Okay, they don't think that, you know, it's worthy that they teach you the whole Bible. Okay. Let's read 2nd Edris 13 and 36. Let's read it. Yes, sir. Behold the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Now, you know, the Most High said, it says right in Edris, behold the word of the Lord. That's our Bible, folks. Receive it. See? It's one thing to have a Bible, but it's another thing to receive the words in it. See, this gives us our true purpose. So now we're not going to walk through life with unrealistic expectations. Receive it. Read. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Believe not the gods whom the Lord spake. These are the gods over mainstream religion. They'll lie to you. They'll deceive you. They'll disappoint you. And only to leave you out dry, depressed at the end of it. Read. 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh. The plagues are drawing near. Don't let these Christian churches and all these other places deceive you to keep, just enough to keep you feeling good and sleep while the plagues takes us over. While the governments of the earth plan to roll over you. It's these trusted institutions that are prepping people for the fall. Read. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Are not slack, come on. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth, Great pains can pass her womb. Come on. Which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. So what is this saying, folks? All pe you, you have people out there hoping things are going to get better. Tell that to a woman in the ninth month with contractions. Okay. And guess what? There's no social epidural for this, folks. Tell that to a woman that the longer she wait there in cramps, 
things, things are going to feel better. That means if you want to deal with this analogy here, the world will only get worse. That woman gets no relief until that's until the baby is delivered. And the children of Israel aren't delivered yet. So this expectation lying to ourselves instead of dealing with the reality of our lives is what leads to depression. We need to stop lying to ourselves and think things are going to get better. They aren't. To think that one day, whatever degree I have or whatever education I have will transfer itself with a better job in hopes of making the money I once made. No, the machines will are replacing you. The immigrants are replacing you. You'll be better off dealing with the reality of your life and doing something in, in its current state than waiting for something to change. Because the closer we get to our people deliverance, and, we're, and it's happening, the worse the world powers and their gods and their Gentile religions sending their people against us the more, the closer we get, the more they'll attack. It's going to make you even more anxious, more upset, because why? You're going to feel, I did everything that I was supposed to do. I did what my parents told me. I went to church. I was a good person. I did everything in my life. Now, my, my life wasn't supposed to end out like this. It's going to, and usually, scenarios like that place people in a very dark place when, when there's no answers. But first of all, you have, to, it, you have to actually accept that things will get worse, not better. And some people might say, well, what type of hope is that for me? What type of hope is that? I have to have some, some reason to live and aspire to live. Right? No. You're thinking wrong. Understand this. You are actually saying there's no hope based on my dreams and aspirations so that now reality can kick in. So you can actually deal with life as is. And this is what and I'm going to show you. Christ broke this down. We, let me tell you, we be living a dream out there faking it, acting as if everything is right. And we know we're depressed. We know we're not living the life that's portrayed online. I'm talking about the majority of the world are in a delusion. Knowing that there's evictions, knowing that the bills can't get paid, knowing that we have to do all these things to just make ends meet, but yet present all things good Really, it's a facade. It's because we'd rather mask it instead of dealing with the reality of our current state. The reality is the life we have right now and what we have. This is our reality. How can I deal with this from a healthy standpoint and say, well, okay, with this reality, how do I endure through these pains? Healthy, sober-minded, strong through this. How do I endure through adversity? Read. Yes, sir. Verse 38. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. Hold up, please. We're about a thousand likes down, brothers and sisters. Please. Hit the like button if you haven't already, okay? What verse? 38. 38, come on. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, within two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb. Come on. Which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. So the close she get to delivering that child, the worse her pain is. So folks, the earth is seeking to deliver the children of Israel, the remnant who will be saved. So as we go, 
the world powers and the governments they've established are going to begin to do what? Clamp down to make life harder for us, worse for us, especially for those who believe. Why? Because they're going to pressure you into the singularity. And if you want to know what the singularity is, I'm going to go there. So this is being socially engineered. They're going to take a little thing away and little, a little bit at a time to the point that a person is broken. And once they're broken, they're willing to deal with any solution outside of the depression that will lead them out of depression. And don't think the world powers, don't think that, that, that they don't have a solution. So they're going to systematically take everything away and they don't have to do what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Let's raise the price of eggs. You think they have to do that? See, stuff like that doesn't affect the rich. It doesn't affect Bill Gates. It doesn't affect Elon Musk. Oh, uh, let's, you think, that's just, okay, let's just, let's just raise the price of eggs for no reason. Why? Man, because the majority of the products we make have eggs in them. So what we're not telling them is that we're going up on everything. Not just regular eggs. Anything that have eggs in it, they're going to pay. And then they'll give you your WIC programs and all these things that haven't, since we haven't, since we're on the child portion of this, a woman in travail, if you may, then they have WIC programs. I know about this in the United, in Philadelphia. I grew up, you know, in North Philadelphia, the WIC program. Then they'll tell you, yeah, in the WIC program now, these are the things you can no longer buy with WIC. Eggs are up and all that. So we're going to take eggs off the table for a minute. And we're going to give you a list of all these things that are unhealthy that we know are going to break down or, or may or may not, who knows, you know, not give your child the proper nutrients. You, you don't even see that, folks. You don't even see that how they've weaponized. How they've weaponized the social programs. And our people, gracious and grateful, will just look at it and say, you know what? I'm just glad God, God have something out there for me. Having what they're going to give me is better than having nothing at all. That's how gracious and humble we are. But they're not, <laughs> they don't look at your gratitude and appreciate it to one day fix and make your life better. See, what they have done, have had, they have had, now you've adjusted to having less. And now they're saying, let's tighten the screws even more. They're never going to let up. Listen to me clearly. Listen to me good, what I'm telling you and what I know right now based on the research I've done within the last, uh, you know, for the last weeks, for, for the few weeks I've been looking into this. Remember, folks. Remember when Section 8 was the thing? Section 8 gives us an opportunity to you, vouchers where you're paying a little bit a month, but you can actually live in any other place you want to live at, even choosing areas where there's better schools for, for, for our children. And no one would know unless you act out or whatever that you were from someplace else. How was Section 8 able to do, how was it able to how was it able to thrive when it was a thing? Well, landlords wanted Section 8. Why? Because of the government subsidies they can charge for a particular apartment or house. Guaranteed money, regardless of the status, you know, a status of a tenant. Regardless. That was guaranteed money. Whatever the market was, they can charge the highest market. And here it is. You're subsidized by government and only paying $190, $80 a month. Landlord didn't care. 
because the government was subsidizing at its highest market value. Check this out, what you didn't see, folks. Under the new immigration laws, the incentives under Joe Biden, the immigrants now have all the subsidies where if they need a house, a landlord is looking at this, looking at the government money and saying, listen, I'd rather have them in the place than Section 8 and others because the government is giving me more money to house them than citizens. Now, what does this mean? America is a capitalistic society, folks. It's about the bottom line for a landlord. It's not about the tenant in the house. He don't care about what you're going through personally. He knows the government is giving more money for the immigrants than those on Section 8. So that was the trick. Separate the man from the woman. To have the woman with all everything only to pull the rug right from under her at a time when there's no protection. Pain. So that's why the landlords aren't accepting uh, vouchers. There's more money to house people coming in, strangers who will take everything over, folks, which will lead to homelessness and a whole nother level of depression. And this is what Second Edwards is talking about, folks. The Most High will test the metal of those who claim they truly believe. Now, if you are depressed, guess what? There's no time to be depressed in a war. It's like someone shell-shocked in the midst of a war in a dugout, crying and screaming and everybody looking, yo, get him out, get him out of here. Right? If you're in a war, you want to make sure everyone is ready for what's coming. You don't want somebody so shell-shocked with what's going on. They in, a, they, they in the corner screaming for mommy. So it's like, okay. We're in a systematic war here. They're trying to make us homeless. And then they, then they want to put us on all this other stuff to break our bodies down so that we can be utilized for something later. How do we endure through this adversity? They tricked us. Right? We're going to say, hold up. We were tricked. We were tricked in going, man being at odds at woman, woman being at odds at men, not realizing this was the moment that they would seize. They would destroy the children of Israel at our weakest point. But that's why I thank the Most High for the word. The Most High is like, well, okay, my son. Okay, my daughter, I said this moment would arrive. You and I together, and this is what the Most High is saying, you and I together is going to show the Gentile and their lesser gods how great we are. It's a frontal attack. The government we must trust, we once trusted in has thrown us out. Now our God is like, well, okay. Come on, my children. Now that you've awakened to the war, let's win it. <laughs> let's win it now. We can't fake the, fake the funk anymore. We can't fake as if everything is good. Right? We can't fake the funk. We're, we're, at, we're at war. Right? Read the next verse. Come on. Yes, sir. 39. 39. Come on. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn. And the world shall mourn. Read. And sorrow shall come upon it on every side. And sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Now, of course, the most high is is primarily speaking of his people. Typically, he's speaking of the children of Israel because everything in the earth 
revolves around what? The fall of Israel according to the Bible's narrative and the rise of Israel. But guess what, folks? The Bible made it clear. The Bible made it clear that the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon every side. Why? You cannot attack God's people without attacking the world. All races, all races are suffering under this. All races of people, they're suffering too. I'm looking at other races of people who you think would be more understanding of what's going on in the earth, seeing how we were attacked genetically and experimented on and all this stuff since we've been in, in slavery. And I see them under a stupor who fell victim and are fallen victim to, to, the, to the world government's campaigns and are suffering. And these were the people that I thought after examining what happened to us, you would think those people were in the know. That they would know, okay, I'm backing up off this. I know that this is... No. The whole world is under a stupor. And guess what? It's not just the Israelites that are mourning in the earth. It's white people. It's Asian people. Hey, like I told you, I went downtown and saw an Asian, pe an Asian guy begging for change when I came back from overseas. And when I, seen, when I seen that, he wasn't too far from Chinatown. I said, you know what? This earth will not last long. Because I've been living a long time in Philadelphia. And not once since the time I've been there have I ever seen an Asian man begging for change. <laughs> I said, it won't be long now. Satan is taking no prisoners. He isn't loyal to anything, anyone. So in order for you to, to destroy us before the powers that be and their evil, wicked, uh, demon-worshipping, blood-drinking Satanist, they have no conscience. So, in, so they don't care about the collateral damage, even if it's their own family, even if it's, if it's their own children. So the, God is not talking about just us going through something, folks. I believe the most I had us go through a lot of what we went through in mourning and captivity and all these other things so that we can be assigned to the nations to have faith and make it make it through adversity too. They're going to need some type of light out of this. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? It's white people getting kicked out of Section 8 too and whose vouchers aren't getting accepted. So they, so they need answers. Gentiles thought, well, okay, as long as I was on the side against black people, yeah, I thought they would take care of me. Satan's like, no, I'm throwing you in with them. <laughs> Thanks for aligning yourself against God's people. Now I'm throwing you in there with them. But what we're saying is, listen, it's not... As far as this word is concerned, I'm not dealing with the black or white dynamic. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. We are to be a guide to those who understand and, and would believe this word to guide them out of darkness, regardless of how they look. Let's read it. Verse 40. Come on. Oh, my people. Now he's speaking of us. He's speaking directly to us, our people, the people who have suffered chattel slavery who built this world. God is saying, hear my word, Israel. Read. Oh, my people, hear my word. Come on. Make you ready to the battle. Make you ready to the battle. Understand you in a battle. Don't let these people diagnose you with something and put you on something and all this other stuff. Don't you know you in war? Don't you know? That in war, you must be what? Sober-minded? Well aware of the warfare? Make ye ready for the battle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss how to, how to do so in a moment. Come on. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. And in those evils, be as pilgrims, the 40th verse, on the earth. What is a pilgrim? 
Because they're going to use what? They're going to use necessities to have us capitulate. A pilgrim is someone living, living and is willing to pack up whatever they have in the moment and go somewhere else. And don't tell me pilgrims can't be strong, folks. The so-called colonies of America started with pilgrims. People coming from another country into a foreign and another place with hopes of doing something great. But they had, but, but these pilgrims needed the faith and strength to walk away from what, from what they deem home. You can't make it through this, folks. And are attached to stuff. Because that's what they're going to use. To, to clamp down on you. To have you make wrong choices. Well you got to do it. You got to pay your rent. Hey you got to have a house. If you don't do what we say. There's a chance. Everything is lost. So they're going to. They know that we. Have an image to uphold. They know as a, as a so-called, excuse me, as a so-called American, that there's an image we must uphold. But the Bible says, get ready. Be like what, Elder Lawyer? Let's hit it again. It says, oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils... Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Be as pilgrims upon the earth. They're going to move. They're going to try to move us out of housing. To socially pressure us. Into, into what? Their solution for us. So the most I say, listen, be willing to lose everything. Pack up what you need. And get ready to roll. Because why? Why? This is why. You're not home anyway. You, we become comfortable in our captivity. And the most I said, here's a reminder that you were never home. You a stranger and a pilgrim anyway. Get ready. Now what now the most I wouldn't say to do this if what? If he wasn't the strength that would protect and guide you through the, the pilgrimage. So he's saying, I'm here's your metal being tested now. The world that have always hated you, if you reject their singularity, they're gonna kick you out. How many of you are going to capitulate or have faith in me? That the same God who guided Israel out of Egypt into the land of Canaan is still alive. And rule from the throne. How many of you really have faith and believe Christians? So now in your life, your house, all of these other things. The food that you <laughs> that you would need for nourishment is now in question. And God is saying, you're in a battle. You're going to trust the government who's behind all this? Or will you trust me? And the Bible states, woe to them who trust in Egypt and make of his strength his arm. You trust on the government that have oppressed you or... Will you trust in me? Let's go. Be like what? Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Upon the earth. Be ready to walk away with no attachment at all. That means if you're getting put out of another house, guess what? What you have to do, and this is what we do to put ourselves in, in greater debt and restraint. What we do is we try to cobble things together to sustain a lifestyle or an image. When no. What we're supposed to do is look at our income and what's coming in 
and adjust our living based on that. You're supposed to look what's coming in. Divide that by what? 25. 25% and say, well, whatever this 25% is out of what I'm making, that's, that's where I can actually afford to live. Because that gives you a chance to what? Save and get out of a hole. You're not just trying to cobble together some money and rent and all that to sustain a lifestyle knowing that eventually the well runs dry and now you're going to be out with no solutions. Now it's time. You're in a battle now. So what does in a military? How do you, how do you count the cost in a war? Well, there's a budget. There's a budget of how much you can do in a war. What I'm making is my budget. If I'm living over my means, that's no one's fault. I must look at my budget, adjust my lifestyle so that now I can now operate without the debt on me and build. Now I'm charting my own direction and not the circumstance. I'm not letting the circumstance dictate my, my movement. I'm adjusting myself so that I can fight stronger as I build. See? So be like pilgrims. Pilgrims, pilgrims will have what? The bare minimum of, of what's needed. But at the end of the day, the pilgrims started with just their bare minimum, right? Right? Look at America right now. They didn't come over Europe with everything and bank accounts and all this other stuff. They scaled from where they were. So that's right. Do away with these hardy lifestyles and these, this fake representation of life and deal with the reality of where you are. Like a pilgrim. Because if you don't, what's going to happen for the sake of your children and all that? You're going to do exactly what the government solution is at the time. You'd rather chart your own movement than, than be in a place where you're forced to do what they're telling you to do. Forty-one. Forty-one. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. He that selleth. Let him be as he that fleeth away. Read. And he that buyeth as one that will lose. So now the Most High is giving you some direction on what to do now. Now I must consolidate. I'm going to look around my house and see all this stuff that I've accumulated that's worth nothing to me, but I can sell to accumulate something for the battle. See, <laughs> he that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth, whatever you have in your home, don't let it become an anchor. Understand whatever you have is for now and be willing to walk away and lose it. See? See? And see, and check it out. That's why the Most High said, make yourself ready for the battle. That means you have the knowledge you are in a war. We are in a social war right now. It's not a frontal war. We're in a social war and we, we're under a medical mercenary war. You have to understand the dynamics of the war. There's a biological war. There's a chemical war. There's many types of wars before some boots are at the door. So the Most High is saying, you know what? It's time to budget, consolidate what you have and what you've acquired up until now, enough to sustain for today. So now you're not ducking out, trying to wonder if the landlord is around and worried about whether or not there's a sign on the door saying a court, a court date and all these things. No, you, we get in, you get in front of this. 42. 42. 
He that occupieth merchandise, as he that have no profit by it. Come on. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that occupieth merchandise, as he have no profit by it. And he that buildeth, as he shall not dwell therein. Understand that every place you're living is temporal. And everything you're doing is to sustain you while getting guided out of here. We cannot allow our life to become a debt where, where we're continually digging out of a hole just to survive, just to sustain an image for everyone else looking. And what am I dropping, folks? What am I dropping? Depression is, an, is when we have when we have an unfulfilled expectation for life and we realize everything we dream will never happen. That's when depression sets in. Lord, I didn't want this in my life. I thought I was doing this and I took one turn. And the world, the world powers want us in a state of depression. Because now you can be utilized. Now they can control you. Right? If I'm dealing with a circumstance, the last thing I'm going to do on that circumstance is sit next to some whack job in front of me with a white coat and say, I need something for how I feel. No. No way. I'm feeling the Holy Spirit had me feeling this for a reason. So that I can seek a sound solution and be guided by the Almighty. I suppose to be feeling a certain type of way because if things ain't going right. I need to know this feeling exists to do something about it. I don't need something to numb me from reality. Neither do you. If you want to sit on a couch and, and try to say, give me something for something. Sit before the word of God. Be guided by him. That's what we're reading. And you hear more solutions in this last 10, 15 minutes than we get in a lifetime within this wicked and evil cesspool called Babylon. Next verse. Yes, sir. Verse 43. Verse 43. Second address 16 and 43. Read it. He that soweth as if he should not reap. He that soweth. As he, that what? As if he should not reap. As if he shall not reap. Understand, folks, that's going to come up one, one day where they're going to shut everything down. They're going to shut everything down. And, they, and guess what? They're going to try to take everything that belongs to everyone. At the end of it. So even if we're sowing, all the things we're doing in preparation, folks, it's only through the spirit of the most high to move us from one level of prophecy to the next, knowing at the end, everything is lost. And the only thing, the only place left is Zion. And that's the reality. We're not going to accumulate anything that we expect to keep. It's understanding the, the dynamics to do things that's tangible to make it to where God said be. Knowing that eventually everything is lost anyway. Come on. He that soweth as if he should not reap. Come on. So also he that planteth the vineyard as he that should not gather the grapes. And understand that. He that planteth the vineyard, vineyard reap. As he that shall not gather the grapes. One day it doesn't matter what we do folks. One day, the governments of the earth will seek to take everything away, eventually. But if, you, if, but if we are in front of it, the Most High, what? He's guiding us through to use the world until we no longer have use for it. See? To use it. Read. 44. 
They that marry as though as as they that shall not get children. They that marry as what? As they that shall get no children. As they who shall get no children. What does that mean, folks? I need y'all to check this out. Let me get it here. Let me get that verse again, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse number 43, uh, 44. 44. They that marry as they that shall not get no children. And they that marry not as the widowers. And therefore that they labor, they labor in vain. You know what they're saying, folks? We used to have this aspiration of a long life and family. A long life, healthy family, a nuclear family, healthy, healthy minded children and all of that, that would bring forth a future legacy. Children who would bear our name and continue a legacy. And he says, well, guess what, folks? Throw those hopes out of the window. They that marry as they that shall get no children. <laughs> You're going to have to just benefit from the short-term joy that it comes with the relationship and family. The hopes of a great family and legacy well beyond this generation is non-existent. They're going to use schools and all types of stuff to do what? To assimilate our children into the singularity. The hopes of being able to control, to control the trajectory of our families, it's going to be an uphill battle just to keep our families together. An uphill battle. Not that it's, impo it's impossible, but imagine someone is fighting Socially, with, with an infinite bank account to keep the husband and wife from ever, ever, ever coming, coming together. To keep man and woman at odds. To make the children believe that they're more intelligent or smarter than their own parents. So he says, listen. We got to, guess right, we, we got to have daily hope and joy. And not this long Disney fantasy idea of marriage. That's what puts people in depression. That's what put people, that keeps people, especially women, in depression. Because they had an idea of this perfect family. But folks, those days are, are done. The days of the Waltons, Little House on the Prairie. The idea of meeting your so-called soulmate and having a name and family and all that throughout time. The idea of a perfect family. And let me make it clear. Disney was a warlock. There have never been a husband and wife who have come together that didn't have adversity. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage and all that. How do we know that? Well, the first marriage was, was Adam and Eve. How did that turn out? So our expectations of this Disney idea causes depression. So we have to temper our expectations and get rid of these bucket lists of expectations we have for people. When God accepts us as we are. All these lofty expectations and bucket lists we have. And then someone has to qualify for you. When all of us have what? All of us have faults. And the most High is saying, well, listen, when it comes to marriage, get rid of those expectations. And glad you have a person here who believe in God who can help you through these times. Two is better than one. Let's go. Yes, sir. Verse number 44. Come on. They that marry as they that shall get no children. 
and they that marry not as the widowers. Come on. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. And understand that one day your job is going to shut down. And if we didn't learn anything from 2020, is that there's no guarantee of employment. So we have to make do with what we have. If the most I'll give you an opportunity to make something now, you better start planning forward to when that so-called job doesn't exist. Read. 45. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. Come on. For strangers shall reap their fruit. Now here it is now. Strangers coming in, reaping all the fruits and benefits. Now, reaping all of the benefits. Come on. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods. And take everything from them, reap. Overthrow their houses. Overthrow their houses, reap. And take their children captives. And now take their children and put their children under the obedience of Gentiles. Folks, what we're, what we're under now, the social construct, what we're seeing with immigration and all that, this is actually happening. Come on. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. In captivity and famine shall they get children. Come on. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. With what? With robbery. With robbery. Come on. Verse. Uh, verse 47. Come on. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, Come the on. more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions. The more our people do what? Deck their cities. Deck their cities. Their houses. Their houses. Their possessions. Their possessions. And their own persons. The more we look as if we got it going on online. The more will I be angry with them. For their sin, saith the Lord. The more I'll be angry with you, saith the Lord. What is the most I highlight? You would never see people who would actually floss in captivity without a plan. <laughs> as if you didn't go into captivity and you were dealing with the image of the beast as if time isn't running out. Yeah, I'm not giving you all of this plentiness and this employment and time and finances to floss. I'm giving you what? Plenteous knowing a famine is coming. And you're going to be sitting around saying, oh Lord, what is happening to me? When all of this money you've made and acquired through these corporations and did nothing with it. The more you deck yourself as if something isn't coming and wasting money as if something isn't coming, the more angry the Most High is going to be with it. He's, he's, he's going to say, you know what? You cannot say you didn't have it. You cannot say that the opportunity didn't afford itself working in these businesses and all that all your life that you didn't have money to do something with in a time for famine. I need y'all to hear this. Hit the like button, please. Read on. Verse number 48. Verse number 48. Let's read it. Let me know if you got a bathroom. Yes, sir. All right. Read it. The more will I be angry with them for their sins, saith the Lord, like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. It's like a whore, someone, a harlot, who envieth a, a right, and honest, and virtuous woman. And the Most High is telling you the truth here. A woman like this isn't satisfied unless she can turn a good woman who would love a husband into that, into what she is. Because she envy that. The misery and depression won't allow this woman to change in order to have what? The honor of a good husband. Her envy it turns into a depression where she seeks out women, good women who fear God and submit to men and, and turn them into what she is.
50. Let's read it. Yes, sir. So shall the righteous hate iniquity. So shall the righteous hate iniquity. When she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face, when he cometh, when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon earth. Come on. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the works thereof. Come on. For yet a little while the, the iniquity shall be taken out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Righteousness will reign amongst us. So the Most High is going to have these current times where the Gentiles are attacking us as a purge. And during this purge, it's so that the righteousness amongst God's people, the cream can come to the top. See? And this is why it says here, read. Verse number 53. Come on. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. So the Most High isn't saying that we're perfect. What he's saying is you want to get through this? Admit that you've sinned against my law. Admit that, that you and we are and were part of the problem. And there's nothing worse than a person who cannot admit their own fault. What the Most High is showing you here, that's the, folks, that's the first stage in healing. Having a healthy and sound mind is to realize how we can be a part of the problem by sinning against God's law. So he says, I know you sinning, but let not the sinner say, I, I'm not doing anything. I never sinned. Because unless we confess this, even and admit this within ourselves, what? If you believe that you haven't sinned, then you're not seeking a solution. You're not seeking to be better. So that's what the most, high, he's not saying we're perfect, but at least admit our fault within this destruction. Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned. Read. For God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and, and his glory, I have not sinned. No one can claim they have not sinned. So here's the Most High getting us out of this state, understanding the battle, this state of depression, this state of anxiety. We go through all these things because what's in us is sin. Unrealistic expectations. But now we go before the Most High and say, you know what? I've done wrong. Now that I've, I've admitted, now we've admitted that we were a part of the problem. Now, the Most High can guide us to become a part of the solution. See? Read. 54. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. Come on. Which spake but a word, let the earth be made, and it was made. And it was made. Now, I need you to go all the way down to where we are right now. I need you to go to the, let's go to the 68th verse. Yes, sir. Second extra 16 and uh, 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. It says, now check this out, folks. Check this out, 68. For behold. The burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. That means all of these nations who knew who we were are now focused on keeping us down. We've become their singular focus. This is what we're seeing with the Roman Empire moving people around into our neighborhoods all over the place. Now that we've found out we're the children of Israel and have walked away from their Gentile pagan temples, Rome have what? Has called in reinforcements. And now they're focused on keeping us under control. We got these East Indians popping out of nowhere as our doctors, as our nurses now. Where the Hades did these people come from? We have these Asians and all these other people popping up 
And they're now amongst us. And no one is asking, well, what's going on here? Azurus is telling us what's going on, folks. Now, this was written almost 500 years before Christ was born. The end that would lead to what? The deliverance of our people. Let's read it, Elder Lloyd. Yes, sir. Verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Come on. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle while you're not paying attention with things offered unto idols. I need y'all to check this out, folks. The restaurants that are being set up in our, in our communities now. While we're idle, not paying attention, they're coming over feeding us food that's sacrificed to their idols. And you wonder why, since the Asians and others have been in our communities, the community has gone down, mad, and regentified. We focus on the regentification before it's too late. The gentrification, the gentrification starts spiritually, folks, when they begin to come in, take all the finances out of the community, and feed us food to their idols. Okay? That's right, folks. The deadly sacrifice is the food we would normally pray to our God. Spiritual warfare is what we're seeing here. You don't know what gods and what spirits we're taking into our homes. Supporting these people. Why are you idle? Why are you not paying attention? Man, the Bible is absolutely out of this world. I'm breaking this down. What was given address 500 years before Christ came to this earth, was born into the earth. How are they going to use spiritual warfare to have our whole community go crazy? Bringing the demons in from their evil countries into our communities and praying these demons, Kali, Thug, and all that into the food, feeding the, feeding the people, watching us go mad. Why are you idle? Now, the food in of itself, as far as I'm concerned, can't affect me. Because the Bible says, for conscience sake, I know the God I serve. I, I'm praying over food, and I'm straight. But imagine a majority of our people in the community who have no idea they're under spiritual warfare and what God to pray to. See? I understand under grace, even though I try to stay away from the majority of that stuff, it has no power over me because I know the God I serve. But imagine the, the, the people who had no idea that they're under spiritual warfare in our communities. Read the 68th verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. With things offered unto idols. These Muslim stores. Halal meat. Halal is Lucifer. All of a sudden, they have all these ancient Asian people coming into our communities and no one can see it's, it's spiritual warfare. Read. Verse number 69. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. And they who what? And they that consent unto them. That's the point, folks. You must consent unto them. Remember when 2020 happened, they came out of nowhere. And they had this campaign where everyone had to consent to mandates. So this don't affect those who don't consent unto them. I don't see them as my authority. I don't see them as people that have the best interest of me and my people at heart. I don't, I don't view them that way. So I will not consent to them. See? 
So if you volunteer yourselves to them, you cannot claim, well, okay, I didn't know this, that, and the other. You had a choice. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. Shall be had in derision. They're going to destroy you. Because you don't understand that there's many levels of warfare. There's many levels of warfare. So if you listen to them and fall victim to it and something happens to you, guess what? You are a casualty of war. You were targeted and you consented to your own demise. Read. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. And in reproach. And in reproach. Read. And trodden underfoot. And trodden underfoot. Read. For there shall be in every place. So this is going to be everywhere, folks, where they're going to have mandates where you would have to consent to your own downfall. Global. Pan. For there shall be in every place. Read. And in the next cities. And in the next cities. A great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So they're coming against those who believe in, in God and Christ, folks. This is a spiritual warfare. This is Satan fighting against those who believe in God and Christ. That's why out of nowhere, during the midst of that whole campaign, they started highlighting pastors that were over-religious, that had religious influence to make the people comfortable with government what? initiatives their whole plan was to attack those who believe in Christ and you look up online right now and I can see it folks you would be surprised how many churches in the United States and different parts of the world are are empty not because people didn't want to go there not because they don't have a community that once supported that the people who once supported the church are no longer amongst the church. The, the go online, folks. You can buy a church anywhere now. Their whole initiative coming over from these other countries and all that, worshiping Satan and idols and all these others. It was an it was a it's strategic. It's a spiritual attack against those who would believe in Christ. Now, some people might ask, well, Elder Elder Recall. Well, these are Christians. The Christians don't know any better. They say the Christians, whatever happened to them, happened to them. Folks, you have to realize Christians are one step away from understanding what we what we know. They understand they understand. They have all of our files, brothers and sisters. They know exactly what schools we went to, what churches we go through, and they know that Elder Rikashiar was once a Christian. So if the most I can do this with someone who was once a Christian, they must do what? They must attack our people at the core before they get to where we are here. All these other pagan temples are springing up brand new temples all over our cities. All over the inner city. Mas. Uh, 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 Hindu temples and all of the churches throughout the United States. So many churches are for sale right now because they know that Christians, they at least at the minimum, believe in the true Messiah who was prophesied to, to change all of this. So, you know, let me tell you, I don't have no problem. I don't have no issues. I'm going to tell you right, right now. I don't have no issues against, Christ, against Christian people, against people who are, in, who are in the church. I have something against the authority who continue to deceive these honest people who are seeking God. That's my issue. These are good people. A lot of these are good people in these Christian churches and are being targeted unbeknownst to themselves. Read the 69th verse one down, other lawyer. Yes, sir. 69. 
and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision. Come on. And in reproach. And trodden underfoot. And trodden underfoot, read. For there shall be in every place, and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And that's what we witnessed for the last couple of years, folks. A frontal, a frontal spiritual attack against those who believe in Christ and the Bible. Having these pagans come over. Set up shop all in our neighborhoods. Targeting us. Medical mercenaries. All of that. Only to replace us. Y'all better wake up and understand when what? When a woman is in travail, Israel is in travail. We're being attacked. And this, and what makes this attack so diabolical? This attack is consensual. They're banking on our ignorance. They're banking on us not knowing the word of God. They're banking on this. Seventy-one. Seventy-one. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. And you know how they're going to be like madmen, sparing none? Because they, because a lot of them consent, consented to the secret sauce. And that's what I'm going to call it. The secret sauce. And that secret sauce has neurological components in it. Okay? That does something to the brain and the body. It attaches people to the machine. The singularity. It's not the mark of the beast, but it's one step towards it. These people are going mad. You're going to hear about all types of anomalous, crazy crimes and people doing things that they would normally do. A woman walked outside with her children butt naked in the dead of winter. And they just died in winter. And no one is asking, hold up, did she and her children, did they consent to the secret sauce? I call it secret because no one knows what's, what's in it. Did they consent to the secret sauce? And that's why it says they shall be like madmen. People are going to lose their mind. Engineered depression. Engineered psychosis. Sparing none, read. Uh, verse number 72. Read the 71st verse for me. Uh, 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. That fear the Lord, read 72. Yes, sir. For they shall waste and take away their goods. They shall waste and take away their goods. And, read. and cast them out of their houses. And cast them out of their houses. Folks. Over 290,000 evictions of black women happened within the last two years. Folks, let me, let me, let me, let me say this. Do you know how long we've been teaching this particular chapter? Since, since before there was a, a word or a name called the Gathering of Christ Church. And here we are. Everything the Most High gave us to talk about. Before there was a YouTube, we're living right now and you still have our people. You still have our people, folks. Denying the reality of what God is saying through his word. Till this day. For they shall waste and take away their goods. And cast them out of their houses. Because that's the plan. Now boom. Let's, let's make it where there's a financial. There's no way out. Let's now raise the interest rates. So that if they seek to buy a house, they're in greater debt. We're not going to allow them to pivot. And then we're not going to accept their vouchers or, or, or low income to allow them to get on their feet. Because all of the vouchers now are going to immigrants and those of the LBGT group when it comes to housing. We're taking away 
your financial privileges. That's in the Bible. Cast them out of their houses. 73. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And it says, then and only then will the world know who truly believes in the God of Israel. Because when they begin to do this, those who believe isn't going to capitulate to the system. They aren't going to link in and take the government solutions. At that time, you're not going to be able to fake the funk. It's the same thing that happened a couple of years ago. Believers who claim they believe in God and Christ totally showed the lack of faith by believing in what they consented to. But folks, what's coming is on another level. It's either you get you do what we need you to do, get this mark of the beast, or hit the street. So folks, even initially, they're not going to be killing people and all that. Their whole plan is to just bar you out of society. Just to block you off the grid. That's it. Well, it's not our fault you don't have the currency. You don't agree to the currency. See, that's how they're going to do it. So there is no housing. There is nothing for your children. There's no WIC programs. There's nothing. There's nothing for you unless you totally capitulate to the beast and accept Satan as your savior, as your God, because that's the God you've been serving anyway. And now they're going to set up a system with, with those who once ate from Satan's hands and they're going, to, he, they're going to come outright and say, you know what? It's time to pay the piper. Which God do you truly serve? Which God do you truly serve? Because you're not going to be down in Satan's world and serve that God who was prophesied to send his son to judge this world. What you want. Now check it out. Then shall they be known, 73, who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as gold in the fire. This is the most high preparing the true believers for Zion, for the wilderness, to go through the tough times. What? Read. Come on. 74. 74. Hear, O my beloved, saith the Lord. Come on. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. The days of trouble are here. Read. But I will deliver you from the same. But I will deliver you from the same. What is God saying here? What is Ahia saying here? You trust in me. Don't consent to them. And through that faith, I'll guide you to a higher faith. I'll sustain you. I made this earth for you. The earth will sustain you if you trust in me. I'll guide you where there's food. I'll guide you where there's enough to sustain day by day. But if you capitulate without faith, then guess what? That's between you and the God you serve. If you have enough faith, allow Satan to throw you out and I'm going to show you my power. That's what God is saying for his children. But it really comes down to whether or not you believe he exists. And the only way we can show whether or not he exists or we believe he exists is through our actions and having faith in that God. Hey, the Gentiles have faith in their God. Look at what they're doing right now. Look what they're doing. They came over here through spiritual warfare, worked through hip hop took the demon spirits of Kaylee and Thuggy and turned it into a culture and, utter, and utterly decimated our community through ancient Eastern gods and goddesses. They believe in their God. And it's through them pushing these gods and goddesses and have given them much wealth and power. So guess what, folks? They believe solely in their God. 
and they become pharmacists, they become nurses, they become entrepreneurs. And these people have been, they have stuck these people so close to us that we don't even realize everything you're witnessing was the plan. Let's read it. Verse number 75. Come on. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. That's the point, folks. You're in a war. We cannot be afraid and we cannot doubt anything. The same people who once, our people once, we didn't know that we were the children of Israel. But we, we always had hope in God, hope in God, Christ, and this Bible. And the same God that says, in that same land where it was said, ye are not my people, there it shall be told unto you that you are the sons of the living God. Did not the Most High awaken us from sleep and give us our true name? That same energy is working. That same spirit is guiding. Now that you've given us a, our name and his name, out of nowhere, will we now believe and have faith in that living God? Like the prophets? Like the children of old? Because that's the only, he's the only God, he's the only God, the God of Israel. Ahiah, in the name of Yeshua, he's the only God who can guide us through this. Read on. Yes, sir, 76. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. And the guide of them who do what? Who keep my commandments. Who keep my commandments. This is why the Gentiles don't want, this is why they don't want you in the Bible. This is why the Christians are trying to say we're under grace and not under the law. They want you under sin. No, I don't want grace unless it's entirely necessary. Okay? You can take your grace. Grace is needed when it's necessary. But the law is imperative. Because the law gives us what? The law gives us a moral compass. It gives us a moral compass to know right from wrong, to make more conscious cho choices towards good. And this is why Paul says he consent that the law was good because it was through the, it was through the law. He knew what fornication was. He knew what sin was. He knew how to stay in order. Right? Come on. And the guide of them who keep my commandments who and precepts who keep my commandments and precepts, read. Say if the Lord God. Say if the Lord God, read. Let not your sins weigh you down. What verse you at again? Uh, 76. 76. It says what? Let not your sins weigh you down. Let not your sins weigh you down. That's, your, that's where the depression comes in at. The things we're doing wrong. That's where all of that, that weight on us. The most I say, don't let that weigh you down. So what we must do now is understand where we're wrong. Pray to the most high and say, you know what? I'm putting all that on you. I lay this at Christ's crucifix. Heal me, forgive me, and allow me to finish. Allow me to finish without darkness, without the weight of sin. That's it. Read. It says, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. And not let your iniquities lift up themselves because the thoughts of sin are continually in us. So it's up to us, it's up to the individual to suppress our thoughts. That leads us back to depression, back to darkness. Le read. 77. Will be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns. Come on. That no man may travel through. See that? We block our way back to God. Read. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. To be consumed therewith. Now, I said earlier they want to break us down have us depressed, 
for the solution. The solution is what? The singularity. I only got a few things to go through and then we'll conclude this lesson. And I have to make a few more announcements. I talked about the singularity. Here's their plan. They want to break you down, folks. Let me tell you. Society isn't going to get better. It's going to get worse. There's going to be more homelessness. There's going to be more oppression. They're going to cut off all the programs. All of that because the solution is to have you break down and agree with the next solution. The government solutions for the world is to bring everyone into a singular mind. There will be no jobs for you. The jobs are... The machines will replace your job. Even the lowest jobs, McDonald's and all that, that's going away. All of that's going to be through machines. Every last bit of it. Mm -hmm. What is the singularity? Let me break it down, their plan. The singularity is near. When humans transcend bio biology, they transcend their biology was a non-fiction book with artificial intelligence and the future of humanity by inventor of a futuristic Ray Kurzweil. Well, folks, this is no longer sci-fi. These are the same ideas that are now being pushed through who? Through who? Uh, let me get this guy's name again. I just had him here. Elon Musk. I'm good. Elon Musk. The book builds on the ideas introduced by Kurzweil's previous books, The Age of Intelligent Machines, The Age of Spiritual Machines, and it embraces the term the singularity. What is a singularity? Let me go here. It's merging the brain with machines. Eventually, nanotechnology, robots, brothers and sisters, what we're talking about is a change of our biology, something that can go into a protein that can go into our cells and change them and connect us to machines. That's the plan. Preparing the body for the mark of the beast. So the answer is, well, if you want a house, if you want something for your families going forward, you're going to have to capitulate and join the singularity. Well, guess what? We're not joining. Nix your singularity. We're not with it. Now, those who believe has a different path. Has a different thought. The majority of people are going to just agree. Why? Because their news told them so. The government said this was the best thing to do. That's on them. What are we to do? Elder Way, let's get Matthew 6 and 25. Say Matthew chapter 6, verse number 25. And if you join the singularity... You'll die with the gods you serve. Because guess what? They're never, folks, listen to me clearly. The hopes and dreams of what we thought this world, that this, put it, the aspiration they gave us for the hopes of this world was programmed in us through television. The lives they gave us and showed us on television was never a reality. Okay, never reality. And the majority of people are depressed or upset and feel so bad about where their lives are right now. You know why? Because, like I said earlier, they've programmed an expectation in us. An image of a beast. An image of a uh, uh, utopia. If we do all the right things, our life will just end out great. And now at the end of our lives, or in the midst of our life, we realize we've been lied to. And it's leading to a high level of depression because what? We have an unfulfilled expectation in life. 
We feel like we failed based on the expectations and dreams we had for life, family, marriage, and all that. Guess what? They gave us the false sense of family and all that through the image of the beast so that we'll be depressed now. So, so that now, so that now, an individual will not be able to work and to sustain that image that we've made for ourselves. And through depression, they knew we would one day sit on someone's chair and ask for a solution. And through those so-called solutions, they would give us stuff that would begin to change our minds, drive us, drive us more crazy out here, numb us from the Holy Spirit that telling us that something is wrong, only, it's only so that we can yield our body over to Satan all the way. Well, I don't have anything else. My whole life is in shambles. Well, I might as well take the solution to do what? To take full advantage of the little life I have left. This was socially engineered to, to have the majority of the earth folks take the mark of the beast. Not me. Uh-uh. I know what happens. I know what happens if you take that. Okay? Your soul will be tormented and destroyed. You'll never, you'll never have rest even beyond this realm. Let's go to Matthew 6 and 25. Let's read it. Yes, sir. St. Matthew 6, verse number 25. Come on. Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. What is Christ saying here? He know we need life. But he's saying, listen, you're not in control anyway. You're being directed. All the plans you had for your life and look where you are right now. You must first, you must first come to the realization that you have no control or power over your direction. You did everything right. You did everything your parents told you to do. You did everything the pastor told you to do. And you're still disappointed to where your life is right now. So that means you got, you got the wrong perspective. You're going the wrong way. So what Christ is saying is. You must reassess. How you see life. You must reassess it. And in that reassessment, you must have, we must have realistic expectations of what is. Not set a life on the hopes of what we can get one day. That's insane. The expectations of life is exactly what you've acquired. You can only expect to get out of life what you have. That's a healthy way of looking at things. So he says, take no conscious thought about all those things. Oh yeah, I got all of these irons in the fire. I'm thinking about this business, that business. Yeah, I, you know, I spoke to someone the other day. I'm like, what you gonna do with your life? And he came back and said, yeah, man, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about uh, opening up a, a cybersecurity company. Cybersecurity, huh? It's tough. It's deep that we have these hardy ideas, and we can have people who say stuff like that and don't have a place to live. See, these are the things, these are the lies we tell to ourselves. If we can sell ourselves a dream, others might believe in this also. And the, and, and the life I'm living now can be utterly overlooked because I'm telling everyone that they are to respect me based on the expectations I have for myself and not the reality of my life now. Cybersecurity, huh? <laughs> the reality of where you are it's where you need to start from. Not selling the dream. I have these irons in the fire. And, you know, I got all these things working, you know. Uh, I'm, wait I'm waiting for Sony to call me back. 
Sony, huh? There was no greater person that connect that, that was connected to Sony than Michael Jackson. How did Sony work out for him? So when people give me these lofty things that they, they have eyes in a the fire, they don't realize the most high, the most high God isn't interested in our delusions and our dreams. He's not interested in that. He's interested in who you are today and what you can become once realizing your current state. And this is why Christ said, you must be born again to receive the kingdom of heaven. So you can take away all your dreams and aspirations and now get a new download for what life is. You're in a war, walking delusional. Be born again so that you can be guided. And the guidance start with, we're living in reality. I'm an Israelite and I was born in a war. The nations have been attacking our people. We're living under a curse. No, we're not living a Disney fantasy here. And with that reality, I can plan accordingly, not by myself, but through the guidance that comes from heaven. I'm dealing in the reality knowing that I cannot have hopes in the world that I know is about to be destroyed. So therefore, there is no depression for me. No anxiety for me. Because I have no hopes in this. The reality is, if we believe that God sent Christ, we believe that one day all of this wastes away and the kingdom of Israel will soon assume itself. See, that's sound reality. I'm not going to be depressed because I lost something. And because, oh my God, that means I have a hope in this world. I'm not going to ask someone to give me a pill to have me feel better about the reality, which is my life. And at the end of it, when the pill wear off, you're still dealing with the what? The reality. But you're only one more day deeper in the hole. Christ is showing us how to dig ourselves out of the hole and deal with life with reality. Read. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat? Folks, don't you think our God know exactly what's needed daily? That's why in the Lord's Prayer it says, give us this day our daily bread. See? See, but that's not good enough for some of us. We have to have everyone believe that this facade we call life, like we're doing better than everyone else and we really got it going on. Look, let me, let me take a picture of my martini with an umbrella on it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sitting there at the beach. I got it going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And all this other crap. Selfies and all that. And guess what? I love moments of, for memory. Don't get it twisted. I like being able to chronicalize good moments, but I like moments of reality. And then when the cameras go off and when all that stuff goes off, you're sitting in the room crying, depressed. And Christ is saying, you don't have to be that way. We don't have to be that way. Let's deal with the reality of life. Because at least if you deal with the reality, now, now we can now plan ways of actually growing from that point. If we ignore the reality of our current status or state, we'll never get out of it. See? Read. Mm -hmm. uh, verse number 30 or the rest of 25. Come on. Is not the life more than meat 
and the body than raiment? Come on. Behold the fowls of the air. Look at the, the, and then Christ told the disciples, behold the fowls of the air. Look at the birds. Read. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. What application have a robin or an eagle filled out? Where do they work? When it says toil or reap, they don't, listen, they don't work anywhere. The birds doesn't, they don't work. Read. It says, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. But yet the most high feed the birds. Read. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you taking thought can add one cubit unto a stature? And why take ye thought for your for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. It says you can't add one cupid to your own stature. But you started off as a baby and look at you now. A full grown man, a full grown woman. You had no control over that. Mm -hmm. See? So the most high is saying there's things outside your control. Why even think thought? Take a thought of something that's outside of your control. <laughs> See, Christ was given real-time perspectives. Work within what's in your control. Read. 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. Look at the lilies of the field. Read. How they grow. They toil not, neither do, do they spend. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. The Most High clothed the earth with the flowers in its splendor. And, and how the Most High dressed the earth is greater than the raiment that draped, which draped Solomon. The flowers are here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> he says, we're thinking about only carnal things, the facade, how we look, how our clothes is, and all these other things. You're missing it. Because when those things are gone, you're not able to floss like you used to or look like you used to, you go into a state of depression. Because you had you had the wrong we the powers of this world gave us the wrong view. And the, and, and and taught us what? They taught us uh, uh an, an an evil, evil thing through Disney. They gave us an alternative facade. They gave us a facade and renamed it happiness. It was a facade they gave us. And we equated that facade to happiness. And happiness is what? Happiness is when we were in chattel slavery, folks, and still had family. When we were barred out and didn't have no expectations from the master. But we were able to pray together, stay together, build a legacy, have a name from one generation to the next. Without anything, that was true happiness. And now we have all, we've acquired all of the, the so-called gifts of the world. And everyone, Americans, in of itself by itself, over 50% of Americans are on some form of psychotropic. With more wealth than any of our families in chattel slavery could ever imagine. I need y'all to think about that. And Christ is saying we have to temper our expectations because what? They're going to take everything away, folks. And, and if we're getting anything now, that money is to be utilized for, for, for the famine that's to come. We ought to consolidate and start moving things into something tangible we can utilize. And you can and none of us can do this without a sound mind.
You cannot do this popping pills and all medicated and all this other stuff. You're going to have to have a sound mind and deal with the reality of your life. And it's okay because the Most High has sent help. He'll send help. And that's what Christ is speaking of here. You don't have to do this alone. You're not alone. Read. And if I can mention as well, that goes to so-called recreational drugs as well. If you're using marijuana and weed to try to fill that hole of darkness that you have in your spirit, if you're using alcohol to try to fill that void that you have in your spirit, those things have to be pushed to the side as well. Yeah. Because what I've found out, man, man, They're engineering fentanyl in China. It's legal for them to actually engineer fentanyl. And, all, and what they're doing in America and others, there's a fentanyl crisis where you have two milligrams of fentanyl and, and that can actually cause an overdose. And then I looked at the side effects of fent fentanyl. It so happened, it's the same side effects they told us when it comes to the... <coughs> So they're going to start sprinkling that stuff on everything. Watch. Drug, I mean, a lot of drug dealers are using fentanyl to cut their supply so that they can actually sell less and get more out of their, their more out of their weight. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more nefarious than just some drug dealers using it, folks. That's my opinion. Okay, it could be alleged. But now I'm looking at all of these marijuana dispensaries. They popping up all over the place, folks. We need to find out whether or not there's some foreign interest in those particular places. And if it's connected to these same people that, have, that, that can legally make the stuff. So what happens, folks, when our children... And others out there that's going there, you think you're getting some legal stuff and whatever. Let me tell you. Here we go. That's why the most high Christ said be sober minded because it's going to come a time when none of this stuff that they've given us. Uh, uh, you know, to distract us from the reality of life. It's going to come a time when none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff can be taken without risk without the risk of losing your life. It's gonna come a time, folks, where anything you try to do as an escape has a side effect that can mean, bye-bye, uh, that's right, you're in that light, and there's a, there's, a, there's, some, there's a spirit with wings holding your hand, and you're moving to the next realm, okay? That's why the Most High says, be sober-minded. Because soon they're going to be able to sprinkle that stuff on all the and on everything. They're going to talk about, yeah, we got to say it's fentanyl problem. Yeah, the immigrants is coming over from Mexico. This, that, and the other. And I'm listening to this crap, and I'm like, well, hold up. They have Chinese manufacturers where it's legal to make it, but they're trying to make you like look like some smuggling going on and some. Come on, you can't see this. People dropping like flies all over the place. And guess what? And the numbers are going up, going up, going up. And that stuff had the same side effect at side effects as a <coughs> We're under attack, folks. And Christ, the most high saying, be sober minded. Be sober minded. Read on. Yes, sir. And yet I, uh, verse 30, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not, uh, shall, shall he not much more clothe you? You think the most high isn't going to look out for us having clothes? That means do not let the world, do not let the world oppress you and depress you. With the expectations of, man, my baby need clothes. Um, even though I did bad, my children always had this and always had that. Listen, our father knows what your children need too. He knows what you need. Stop trying to fulfill the expectations 
that you believe others have of you. It's time to budget. It's time to scale down. It's time to deal with the reality of the money that's in front of you and do and, and, and budget accordingly. If you're living a life where your money is just maintaining your lifestyle, guess what? That's not a smart way of living. If your money is just paying for you to stay, just to pay bills. Okay? If that's the way we're living, that's where Satan wants us. That, that's the way, I'm going to tell you, in a capitalist society right now, we should be able to pivot. And it starts with budgeting. It starts with budgeting, folks. If you're just paying just to sustain bills, <laughs> it's just a matter of time before they can say, well, okay, no more money. In order for you to live in a house or have any subsidies, you're going to have to do what the government says. And guess what? The circumstance will dictate what? You're doing exactly what they consent. But if you budget right, be like, if I'm paying just to sustain, I'm living in the wrong place. Okay? Because money is supposed to be liquid. Which means money is, is actually made to make more money. If, if I'm using money just to live, I'm not budgeting right. How do I get out of this? Well, if we're making money, you look at 25% of what you're making and understand that's what you can afford to pay rent or mortgage. And you find something there to be there temporal and stack and save and do what you got to do to move to the next level of living you can live. That's how you do it. And that means you're in total control where no one can ever say, get out. Somebody, somebody's like, whoa, 20, man, 25%, that's only this. Well, that's the reality of what you can really afford to buy yourself time. That's the reality of it. And, you know, we're going to have conversations like that in the academy and all that, how to do it, because I'm not telling you anything that I didn't, that I myself didn't go through. I knew what it, I, I know what it is and I know what it is to be homeless. I know what it is to have nothing. But you can't keep just throwing money at sustaining. That's the world they want, a socialistic world so that you, they can control you. You got to come to the realization of what, how much money that you can utilize to live that you can actually afford to grow your money in. And the next thing you know, people will be like, man, how did you do all this? How did you do this? I was able to deal with a discipline. Just because the money there doesn't mean it should have been spent. It's a discipline. See, and now I can take the over excess and begin to do other things with that can help me long term and help my, my, our families long term because we're not just wasting. And look what they do. And they don't do this to any other culture, folks. Where our culture is Fendi bag, uh, Louis and all. And we say, yeah, I'm bossing. I'm boss. I'm a boss. Me and I'm this. I'm like, what? They don't do this to any other people, folks. Celebrating a lifestyle that you know none of us, the majority of us, don't know anything about. Getting evicted, almost 300,000 people, women, evicted between the last year and a half. And we still talking about flossing and what it is to be boss and city girls and all this other crap. They don't do this to any other people, folks. And these are our daughters out there with that mess. And then you got guys simple as the days old, cross-eyed with, with, with gold teeth in their mouth, go straight to the Jews to get jewelry that depreciates no, no sooner as they walk out of, out, out of the jewelry store, mm -hmm. simple as the days old, tats and, and tats greased up, uh, you know, they, 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 got, they, they, they got nipples on their chest. I'm like, yo, no, nah, no. Nah, no, God, God don't want that. 
This is the nonsense they've pushed in our community. And, and then now people are depressed because you, they come down off the high. They come down on, on this flossing in the videos when the camera goes, goes out. And they realize what? They realize that their life is a living hell. Mm -hmm. That they help create. That we help create as a people. Let's finish up, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. 31. Take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Come on. Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Where? Read on. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles seek, which is carnal stuff. When I say, it, it's about the lifestyle for the Gentiles. It's about showing how far they've come above us. That's why I hate them, them, them little reality shows they have out there. The Housewives of Atlanta and all this. Because our, our families, our, our children and others see this and be like, yo, yeah, we need our little circle. And now it's about, I'm an entrepreneur, it's about my brand. Your brand is slave. A slave to the system. It's about my brand. It's about this. And I'm looking at these people I'm like these people are these these people are insane. In every reality show, you know, there's there's a marriage. And then then by the next season, it's a divorce. Then the next season, the same person married. It's about the party, the celebration. I'm like, it's insane. They're giving, a, giving us a false sense of reality that our children are following. And then when, we, when they grow and realize it's not a reality, they grow with resentment. And then in the earth, there's more depression. It's insane. Read on. Yes, sir. For all these things or for after all these things do the gen Gentiles seek. Come on. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now the most high is putting us, Christ is putting us in what? He's putting us in the right perspective here. Our purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not living the expectations of this world. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God is God's people. So it's our duty to fix our people. We're the kingdom of God. And that fix starts within ourselves. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. That's the reality. That's the reality for us. And understand that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The kingdom of heaven is at war. The Gentiles and their gods are at war with us. We must seek to protect our people. Read. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness to follow his law. To set a moral standard for the next generation we're responsible for. Read. And all these things shall be added unto you. And everything that you wanted that could lead to happiness. Now, it's within measure of the Bible, though. But a place to stay, food, clothing, what you need to exist. If you seek the kingdom of God, he's going to make sure you'll have at least the bare minimum until he returns. Now, that's a guarantee from our God. That's a guarantee that if we seek and do what's right by God, set a moral standard and begin to help our people. And that's what this work is about here. Then at least we'll have the bare minimum. And now we don't have what? The pressure of the government over us, throwing us out, coming against us and all that. Because why? That's right. We've adjusted our lives according to what? The reality of what we've made within our lives. We've adjusted ourselves. And, 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 and guess what? And it's willing to live with the bare minimum and not be ashamed for it. Be willing to say, listen, I'm scaling all the way back. I don't, listen, 
I don't have to put myself on out online and show them what I'm doing. I'll chill on all that, and they can have all the pictures they have out there right now while I build myself with what I actually have. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they'll see me later. And when they, see, when they see me later, after I've adjusted my life, my spirit, my budget, my household, they'll ask once the most I exalt me in that day, how did I get there? And you know what? That person will be able to teach and say, you know what? I had to humble myself. I had to live within my means. I was living over my means. And it made it where my whole life led me to, ch led me to chase. I was chasing just to survive. It was taxing on me. It stressed me because I was chasing to sustain a lifestyle and I still had nothing. And the most I said, stop. Take inventory of your life. Adjust accordingly. And when I began to adjust and realize that it wasn't about showing forth the life to impress others, I began to understand what life is. I began to adjust myself, focus on my family, set up and make sure my house did the commandments. And I live within my means and, and, and read this word. And the most high exalted me in due time like he promised. That's the formula, folks. That's the formula. So I just wanted to put that out there, brothers and sisters, that endurance through adversity starts with self-examination and adjusting according to the reality within our lives. Last one, Elder Lawyer. Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah chapter 33, verse number 6. Yep. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. What is it? And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is, is his treasure. See that? Now, folks, I've tried it every other way. It wasn't until the Most High moved us out where there was no possibility to get anything here in Babylon that we had to totally trust in the Most High and understand how to live with no dependence on this world. Prayer, teaching, and operating within our means and by doing that, when something came, you know, it was highly appreciated as a gift from the Most High. And it was precious because we didn't know whether or not we was going to get anything else. And we, we made sure we took care of it and we budgeted it. <laughs> and then the most, and then I was like, man, if I had known that this is how to do it, we would have done it this way a long time ago. You can't be in a world which is built on servitude and think that you're going to get out of servitude in servitude. It doesn't work that way. The system was made to keep us servants. So we must budget within the construct of the finances we get, even if we are serving to one day, to one day, have a life that life will be adjusted to not depend on Gentiles, not depend on the workforce. So whatever we have, it's good enough. The most High provided it. But now it's time to adjust based on where we are in this war so that you'll have what? Substance through the war. With that, I'm going to say shalom. That concludes our uh, lesson. Uh, let me also, before we go, brothers and sisters, uh, for those who, did, who don't know this, uh, March 12, 2023 is our next academy. Go to historytimes.org. Okay, please go there because check this out. This is going to be the first, the first 
Academy that we do with a spiritual warfare theme. All lessons in this upcoming Academy will have an overall theme centered around the spiritual warfare and how to battle against it. Every lesson will be brand new or updated with spiritual warfare as its focus. The creation of the universe, updated. The state of the world, listen to me clearly. The state of the world before its physical and spiritual corruption. The promised seed, updated. We're going to highlight the Messiah who was born of the promised seed to destroy the works of darkness. Man, it's going to be some serious learning here. The promised seed, highlighting uh, uh, the fall of, the, of Israel and Judah, updated. The origin of Israel's kingship, how we, be, how we, uh, we we're going to highlight the height of our kingship as Israelites and, and how we fell to idolatry, witchcraft, and the works of darkness. The battle against witches and warlocks, how to identify a modern day warlock and or witch. How do we identify a professional warlock or witch? You're going to find out. How ancient witchcraft has been modernized and used as a weapon in current times. And we're going to have biblical principles on how to battle spiritually against the spiritual wickedness in high places. We're going to have a, a round table too, the divide between man and woman. Discussing the various levels of social engineering and propaganda that have been used to separate us and destroy the greatest institution since creation, family, man, woman. And as well, we're going to have an updated lesson on exposing the mother of harlots, the Roman Empire. That and more. I would also, so make sure you go to historytimes.org. It's going to be an academy like you've never seen before. So please be a part of this because the total theme, each lesson is going to be on the invisible as well as the visible. That's the context. The spiritual warfare is going to be the theme on how to know when you're in a spiritual battle and how to overcome it. How do you know when someone or some people you've agreed with or consented with through your agreement have put a curse on you and your family. All of that, folks, is in Scripture. And if they curse you, guess what? The curse goes back on them. That's why, that's why Abraham said, blessed are they that bless, bless you, and cursed are they that curse you. But our problem as a nation, that who, because our people who don't know we're Israel, because we don't know we're Israelites, we don't know when people are cursing us. So that we can go to the most high and say, listen, I bless you and I need you to fight from the heavens for me against those who have cursed me and my family. You go towards the most high. You pray for them, but you put the battle in Christ's hands. And I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk. About, a lot of us don't know that there's ways we can pray to Christ and Christ go, he go deal with it. Like, I'll bless you that curse me. I'll bless you. But I'm going to put it up to the most high that if you are, if you are attacking an intentional attack against me and my family, if it's intentional now, Christ have to take that up. And I'm going to be going into that. And folks, we are intentionally getting attacked all in the community. Intentionally. They know everything they're doing will lead to a permanent regenification of our communities. They know it. But I'm going to tell you this. The nations can do nothing we as a people don't consent to. Satan, the serpent, he didn't force Adam and Eve to eat anything. So that and more. Also, I would like y'all to go to uh, gatheringofchrist.org. We have all of the uh, Twitter and all those sites and all that. We've actually transitioned those so that we can get out there. All the links are right there on the ma major page. Twitter, Instagram, you name it. We're there. Know that we have a short time before they begin to shut everything down and censor the world. So go to gatheringofchrist.org. 
Join all of that. Twitter everything we have there so that we can get out to these people while there's still time. All right. And also we have the new GOCC calendars. They're out now. If you order, they'll be at your home within a few days. Go get the calendar. Okay. That's right. Run the race. And we dedicate this to our brother Dwayne. Run the race. And it gives a scriptural breakdown on how to follow, follow the high holy days. Scriptural breakdown in it. With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We'll see you tomorrow in the academy where we're going to go into Elder Lawyer. We are going into a brand new lesson. The judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. The judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. Starting tomorrow. Brand new lesson. You don't want to miss that. And of course, we're going to parallel that with the modern day daughter of Babylon, America. Also, as you can see on your screen, there's a barcode there. Uh, that's so if someone has a phone, when they look at this, our particular broadcast, they can scan that on their phone. And all of, all of our sites where you can actually connect with the Gathering of Christ Church will appear. Will appear. Okay. So make sure y'all do that support. This is what you'll see once you put in that barcode. You'll see these. See? Our homepage, academy, the calendar, everything is right there. Everything is right there for you. Okay? All right. So that barcode will allow you to scan that and everything will come up. Every place, all places where you can find the Gathering of Christ Church worldwide. And we're, we're, we're consolidating everything into one, knowing that soon the majority of these platforms will be controlled. Get ready for China-type censorship throughout the earth. That's all I can say here. With that, support the work. As you can see, if you'd like to donate strictly for the broadcast we do weekly, you would use the cash app at the top. Okay. What's at the top goes directly to us as an offering. And what's at the bottom, that's usually church members if they are tithing an offering for the church. All right. But what's at the top right here, GOCC 144 donate, that goes directly to us for, you know, the dedication and offering we do for the, you know, for the broadcast, for the Wednesday broadcast, as well as our Sabbaths, for those who would like to support us, our homes, all right? With that, I'm going to say shalom. May the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon see Zion. And please, brothers and sisters, go to historytimes.org and support the Gathering of Christ Church's Academy. There's nothing like it on earth. Shalom. Shalom. But now I'm found I'm a child of Israel I heard the sound, you hear the sound. Please give me the strength to stand today With my eyes towards the east Show me Through the tribulation, 
I know I must stand for a new heaven, a new earth. Show me the way to Zion. I'm on my knees, laying my life on the line. I'm begging, please, please don't. I feel the spirit.